just start from the very, very beginning, like set me in time. Um, where should we start? Last summer, people might be aware there was a story that bubbled in the media for a couple of weeks. In the summer of 2020, writer Chris Heath noticed a strange national news story. It has been happening all across the nation, including right here in our area. You know, it was in most people's newspapers and it was on TV all over the place. What's behind this rather odd phenomenon? People across the country are getting unsolicited packages. Listen to this. No idea where it came from. I didn't order it. People have been receiving mysterious packages that they did not order. People all over America had started receiving these completely baffling packages that appeared to have Chinese writing on. Packages, some of them seen here from the Tampa Bay Times, are usually marked with Chinese characters. And inside were packets of seeds. Some are being called mystery seeds, and they have appeared in mailboxes in more than two dozen states. The USDA has now put out a warning saying not to open these packages or even plant the seeds. There's nothing on the package that seemed to explain what the seeds were, but they were addressed to the people who received them. As far as they were concerned, they had no idea why they were being sent them. I guess it's something that's been going around the area. My wife had posted something online about having... I actually have no memory of this news story, but apparently these seeds turned up all over the country last summer. Tens of thousands of unsolicited seed packages. I think it would have been strange any year to have started receiving these packages, but July 2020, I think it was particularly unnerving. We'd been in various stages of lockdown for about four months by then. People were pretty anxious about just any physical things inside their lives. You know, we were all wiping surfaces and, you know, some people were very nervous about what they received in the mail. Officials also stressed if you receive one of these packages, do not plant the seeds. You know, the, the, these stories carried on for quite a while, but, you know, like most sort of media firestorms, Without any sort of new big twists to it, it slowly began to abate. It's amazing. It's an amazing story. It almost doesn't sound real, but it, it is real. Gordon, thanks so much for coming up. <laughs> it's so interesting you mentioned this because I actually received a package around this time that I also did not order. Uh, it had Chinese characters on it. It was this kind of impractical coat hanger that you would, like, drill into the wall. I can't, And then it, like, would fold out in this strange, like, kind of not very um, <laughs> useful way. <laughs> like, like, I was like, I'm just going to, like, hang clothes from my wall. It's very strange. Um, I was totally mystified by this at the time. And I called all my family members and friends of mine just to see if they had sent me this weird clothes rack. And everyone was immediately horrified that I had received this. My partner was like, why did you bring that in the house? My sister was like, you should throw it away. And we we were in a tizzy about it. What did you do with them? By the end of that day, I just put it back outside. We were so paranoid. Anyway, I guess I'll, I'll I'll just like table that. Go ahead with your story. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I was enjoying that. Um, but but you, you know, on one level, that's got absolutely nothing to do with what happened with the seeds. But on another level, th- the reaction that you had is absolutely central to understanding the whole of this story. And it took me a long time. I worked on this story for several months before I realized that. This week, writer Chris Heath attempts to solve the seed packet mystery of summer 2020. And he finds it was not at all what it seemed. I'm Julia Longoria. This is The Experiment. The first story about this that I can find appeared on TV in Utah on July the 22nd. Checked my mail, opened my mailbox, and I was like, oh. A woman called Laurie Cully, west of Salt Lake City. She got a package in the middle of July, one of these seed packets, and she was a little thrown by it. Um, And then on July the 21st, she got a second packet. I hope that 
Um, it's nothing too serious. The label said earrings, but something else was inside. Well, obviously they're not jewelry. <laughs> And I opened them up and they were seeds. She posted on her Facebook page that she'd received these strange seeds. When she posted about it online, she found out one by one. These three are from my daughter. Quite a few people had the same story. And she gave an interview to the TV station. And that was the beginning of um, what became a, a sort of media moral panic about uh, mystery seeds from China. Over the past week, people from all 50 states have received these mysterious seed packages. The Delaware Department of Agriculture reported several people in the state received similar packages. Right now, they're still investigating exactly where these seeds are coming from and why they're being sent. With more and more recipients of the suspicious seeds, the USDA is trying to calm many concerns of direct harm through the So far, investigators have not tracked down the origin of the seeds, although it does appear people are finding a variety of these seeds in packages. Packages. As it turns out, there were all kinds of seeds. At least 250 different species were sent. Typically, they'd come in a sort of um, yellow packet with a China Post sticker on the front with lots of Chinese writing over it. And then inside that, there'd be a clear kind of sachet with the seeds inside. Looks like Chinese script on them. Even though it says over here, stud earring. Um, one of the weird things that freaked people out a bit more, and it's one of the things that freaked Laurie Cully out, is that one of the few things in English on the packages would be a customs description. And, and they wouldn't say seeds. Nearly always they'd say something like stud earrings. It's studded earrings on the outside package. Jewelry, bracelets, stud ring, uh, wire connectors. As soon as the story was out there, then people were really freaked out because there was that thing that was on TV and that thing in the papers, and they were getting those weird Chinese mystery seeds. A lot of my friends are like, what's up with the seeds? And I'm like, I don't know. Do you think someone is trying to sneak some invasive plants into our Whoa, country? Oh, guys, we're a part of a conspiracy. What is it? Fuck <laughs> yeah! What did I do? I spent weeks reading people's reactions at the time on the internet, comments on Facebook gardening groups and state agricultural department Facebook pages. I kept a file of the theories, and my goodness, there were a lot of them. It's a bioweapon to destroy crops in the US. I saw on TV that the seeds were filled with cocaine. They're laced with some kind of poison or virus. Some dangerous organisms or chemicals. Don't open them up. They probably grow plants to murder hornets like a Deep lot. Deep state faux right-wing propaganda. Unrestricted warfare from the CCP. Plot twist. Trump is behind this. It's the whole beast system. The beast knows. But what if it's the cure for the lab-created COVID virus? If the media is pushing the story, you know it's complete BS. Is there bubble wrap on these items? Beware and don't pop the bubble wrap. Just a thought. I'm wondering, people were claiming it might be bioterrorism. Like, is that a total overreaction or is there a world where we would be sent biological material in the mail as like a attack on the country? Well, I think the thing is, is that you know, whether or not there was a real threat, you know, how seriously you judge that threat to be, you couldn't rule it out. Logically, it would seem a rather weird, random way to do it. But could it be done? Of course it could. The USDA couldn't just rule that out. And they started taking this very, very seriously. And the advice that the USDA and local departments were giving out was pretty strict. Don't burn these seeds. Don't put them in the trash. And then more than anything else, whatever you do, don't plant them. But of course, some people already had. People planted the seeds? Because these had been coming for weeks. And whereas one person might get a weird coat hanger and <laughs> freak out and leave it outside after a day, <laughs> just as a random example, so, so, um, someone else would go, that's weird. I know what I could do with that. Doyle Crenshaw from Boonville got these strange seeds in the mail two months ago. One person who became momentarily a little famous for this was called Doyle Crenshaw. Not every two weeks I'd come by and put Miracle Grow on them. Right He'd now. ordered some marigolds, yeah, as he remembered it. And then an extra packet came with them of these weird looking seeds. And they just started growing crazy. And then these weird fruits started growing. And these fruits are these strange pale green oblong fruit that grow to 
be about 14 inches long. The Department of Agriculture is removing the plant on Crenshaw's property for further study and are urging people to not plant the seeds. Right now, they're still investigating... They took the plants for testing. And they determined um, they were Benincasa hispida. The fruit is colloquially known as a Chinese watermelon or a wax gourd or a winter melon. It's not some, like, genetically engineered, never seen before. No. (laughs) Meanwhile, the USDA ended up with over 19,000 packages. The seeds went through a pretty rigorous testing process, you know, did everything to absolutely rule out that anything really truly nefarious was going on. And did they rule that out? They didn't find anything. But at the same time, all over the place, uh, a lot of apparently smart people immediately thought they knew what this was. It's basically an e-commerce strategy called brushing. So wait, what is brushing? Brushing, it's kind of tricky to explain, but it's, um, it's a kind of e-commerce scam. Basically, companies in China compete for the best rankings and reviews on e-commerce platforms like Amazon. And one way of doing that is to, get, is to have more sales and better reviews. One way of, of getting those is to fake them and to set up accounts in other people's names and say that you've sent them your fabulous product and then write a review in their name saying that they've received your fabulous product and that it's fabulous. So I, I am a Chinese company. You're, you're a vendor selling something. Um, I sell expensive headphones. Perfect. Great. So where am I listing my headphones? You're listing them on an e-commerce platform. Got it. So, so Amazon would be an example, but there's plenty of others. What is my goal here? Your goal is to have lots of reviews saying that you've sold loads of these headphones and they're fantastic. So people want to cheat it if they can. Got it. One way of cheating it is to set up accounts in the names of random people, say, across America, and say that you've sent them packages with your fabulous product in and that they've received it and that they've posted a review, which you write because you control their account, saying your product's fabulous. It, it, it's apparently very easy to get thousands or millions of Americans' personal details very, very easily on the internet. That's not even the difficult bit of this. That information's readily available. It doesn't mean that anyone's hacked into your Amazon account or your other, uh, other accounts. This is totally separate from that. But the way that the e-commerce platforms apparently verify whether your review is real is by making sure that a package really went from the company selling the goods to the account holder receiving the goods. Now, if you're selling headphones, it's going to be pretty expensive to randomly send your fantastic headphones to all the people who you want to post these reviews from. So what you do instead is you send them something more or less worthless, something very cheap, maybe a plastic phone holder or a hair tie, or maybe in this case, seeds. That way, a package really does go from China to a home in America, and then you can write your review and it doesn't get disqualified because it looks like the transaction really happened. If you Google the seeds phenomenon of 2020, this is the most common explanation you'll find. That Chinese companies that sell more expensive items, like headphones, were sending packets of worthless seeds to random Americans so that they could get the delivery confirmation for that seeds package to use to post a fake review of the product they actually sold. The more great reviews they got, the more they would climb in search rankings. Basically, this became the conventional accepted default explanation for what had happened. Um, But perhaps most importantly, it was the explanation effectively endorsed by the USDA. Um, I spoke to Dr. Asami El lissi uh, the deputy director who headed up the response. Um, and I'll quote him because it's it, it, the very precise way in which he said it, it was, we are not able to think of any other reasons behind this event aside from the brushing scam at this time. Um, But effectively, that sent the explanation out there as as endorsed. And I don't think I've seen anything between now and then uh, that's questioned that. So I I assume the story I was telling was the story that I've told you so far, which is to try and really understand and reproduce um, and really get down in detail with what happened over those weeks. And then I would explain how it was actually brushing. That was the plan. That was the plan, and that plan did not work out. Um, 
But we'll come to that. We'll come to that after the break. When Chris told me about his brushing theory, I thought back to the mysterious package that I'd received last year. The impractical clothes rack from China, seemingly delivered to me from no one for no reason. So I actually found this email dated, oh, it's actually dated September 23rd, 2020, um, which brushing would actually be a... a (laughs) an answer to the mystery. Um, I'm just going to read it to you while I have it in front of me before we go on. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Okay, so it's actually addressed to our editor, Catherine. Um, Hi. Very strange thing happened today. My doorbell rang. I went down to answer it. And there was a package on the floor from a Joe Doe in Newcastle, Delaware, addressed to me via USPS, labeled on the outside as Coat Hanger. I opened the package, and inside there were two boxes labeled clothes racks and a thank you note written in broken English saying not to return it to the Delaware address posted because they can't receive mail there. I did not order a coat hanger or clothes racks. There is no order on my Amazon or Etsy account for a clothes rack. My sister, boyfriend, roommate, parents were all stumped by this. My mom and I Googled the name of the sender And this forum came up, all with mysterious complaints similar to mine. People receiving toys they didn't order, people whose Amazon accounts were hacked by Joe Doe under the same address to spend thousands of dollars on products from their account. Some people on this forum actually claim they're Chinese and that they are part of the scam, or that they're Chinese and they're not a scammer, but use this address in the U.S. to make it look like they're a U.S.-based company. Very bizarre. But how could someone scam me by sending me a free clothes rack? Is this like a Chinese conspiracy to weaken faith in USPS? That's far fetched. But who knows? It's 2020, <laughs> Julia. It's like, because if you'd found articles about brushing, then you would have been 100% convinced that that was it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, brushing. So, My thought was that if brushing works, as I explained, then surely the e-commerce companies can identify that fairly easily because it it relies on them identifying those tracking numbers for it to work in the first place. So I I went to Amazon first because they're the biggest. I'd, I'd seen Amazon mentioned a couple of times back in July and August when all of this was at its height. And they'd said in a couple of media stories, well, actually you know, we looked into it and we think that um, this one and that one was an order delayed by COVID. And I thought, well, okay, maybe one or two. But I realized, I thought now, you know, they've had months to look at this and everyone knows this is brushing. And, you know, they must have privately, you know, this is such a big story. They must have privately analyzed what's been going on. So I got in touch with Amazon wanting to talk about brushing and wanting them to tell me what they could about brushing. But they got back to me and said, well, uh, hold on, you know, we think it isn't brushing. We think it's delayed orders. I was quite contemptuous of this when it was first said to me because it just seemed ridiculous. I assumed they were just not really looking into it seriously. And I more or less said, you know, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you some examples that aren't delayed orders because that's going to be very easy for me to do. And then maybe we can have the conversation that I was hoping to have. And they said, fine. So how did you go about doing that? Well, I immediately thought of Laurie Kelly, the woman from Utah. Who's and I opened them up and they were seeds. It seemed a very clear, clean example. She'd received these two packets. Um, now, I did know she'd ordered seeds way back in April because she told me. But her memory was she'd received those. So I, I still thought, OK, we're just going to carry on proving it slowly. So I asked Lori Culler if she minded looking at her Amazon order history so that we could pull up the delivery dates of the seeds that she had got and make a case that there was no connection between the two things. What I found was not what I expected and not what she expected. 
She'd ordered seeds back in April. She'd ordered three packets of seeds. All of them were from, though she hadn't known it, Chinese vendors. Um, I've actually got the details here. She bought 100 clematis seeds for $1.99, 100 clematis vine seeds for $1.53, and 25 wisteria seeds for $1.99. Now, though these had been ordered in April, what it said on her account was that they'd not been shipped until between June the 15th and July the 7th. That in itself was quite something to take in. But then there was something else too, which is that these companies, once I had the names of the companies, there's a way of getting through to the Amazon reviews of these real companies who had sold seeds last summer. And their customer reviews are just full of people going, I ordered seeds and they never came. I ordered seeds and they came four months later. I ordered seeds and when they came, they didn't have any information and they said they were earrings. What's going on? (laughs) <laughs> and so not only did I see an example that I thought was going to confirm something, do the opposite, but I suddenly saw a glimpse of a whole other world. So I'm, I'm just floored by this. So in the moment, what was going through your head? I was a bit slow. So, um, <laughs> I, well, I'd, I've read literally tens of thousands of Facebook posts And so many people were telling the same story. And it just seemed inconceivable to me that en masse they could be mistaken. But then suddenly I saw a way, which was that, first, think about where we were in March and April. Suddenly we're all locked down. So it's not at all surprising that loads of people would have ordered seeds at that time. There's not only the lockdown and the fact that people are in their houses and gardens, it's also planting season. There's actually clear evidence there was an incredible surge in the sale of seeds. So let's say that bit makes sense. What you've got to explain, if it's not brushing, if you think these could possibly be orders that people have ordered and then somehow forgotten about it, you've got to have a lot of reasons why they're not making that connection. So then how are people failing to make the association? Well, we've already got the time lag. You know, everybody or most people were probably a bit off because of the pandemic anyway. Second, they need not to have realized that they ordered seeds from China. That's easy because when you're on an Amazon page, you see the name of the vendor. You have to click through to find out more about that vendor. So I think it's easy to imagine that people didn't know they'd ordered from China. You're getting a package from a country you don't know, no description of what it is. Not only that, but you've got some weird description that says it's some strange type of earring. Yeah, why would it say that it's some kind of earring? I think the thing is that if it isn't brushing, there's a a perfectly logical reason why these things might be described as jewelry or wire connectors, which is that while it is possible to have sent seeds legally from China, to do so required a lot of certificates and documentations and approvals. And these $2.99 packets of seeds definitely didn't have any of that. So they had to be disguised from customs. And I think the presumption is this was the default way of trying to hide them from customs. You just described them as something else. I see. So how could possibly they not have been sent for months and then all suddenly been sent? Well, you know, we know what was happening in China in those months. They had one of the strictest lockdowns anywhere, and it was in the largest part successful. So we can immediately see a reasonable narrative for how suddenly they were not able to fulfill orders, and then how at a later date they may have suddenly been able to fulfill them. Those are all big reasons why you might think it, but then there's an even bigger one. Because it turns out that not many people reported these seeds until there were media stories. And then the flood came. Well, there's a huge difference between receiving a weird package, even with all the factors I've just described, in isolation, and receiving a package when you've just read about that there's strange, weird packages coming from China. So at that point, you've got a choice in your cognition. Are you going to put together all of those steps and think maybe it's what I ordered back in March or April that I forgot about, that maybe I didn't get, I can't remember? Or are you going to think, I got that thing on the news? (laughs) So, So now, to say all of this isn't to prove that this is so, but 
I suddenly realized that's a narrative that doesn't seem ridiculous. And I was absolutely stunned. So just thousands of people forgot. Well, if they did. Um, because so then I'm obviously, well, having had this thought, now I'm really worried. What, what did you do next? Well, I needed to find some more people. You know, and after I'd looked, other people at the magazine worked trying to find more people. You know, I, I sort of asked, I said, can we try and disprove what I'm saying? And we went looking for people to try and do that. So first, can you, can you just introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Will Gordon, and I'm an associate editor at The Atlantic. I'm a fact checker. Okay, so what what was your mission in relation to this? Yeah, so so Chris, I think Chris kind of went into it, um, you know, thinking that, well, it's definitely a brushing scam. But then he realized that there were these instances where, you know, people would look back at their history and they'll find out, oh, I actually uh, did order these seats. So <laughs> he wanted me to, to kind of stress test that theory to, to see how common it was. So I, I sort of contacted these people who may have gotten these mystery seeds and talking to them sort of about whether or not they ever ordered seeds from e-commerce platforms. Um, hobbies, I'm big into houseplants. Mm -hmm. And I, I love the outdoors and gardening and, and flowers, pretty things. I get the seeds and then I have a, you know, I, play, I have a two-week rotation. Well, did they forget um, a transaction or, or is it, or can we find an actual example of rushing that occurred? So when did you get the, get the seeds? I want to say it was like March, April. I, so I got that stuff from China. Uh -huh. um, it was, what was it? It was an, I forget, it was in August, was it or something? It was, it was, it was the seeds from China. Well, I don't know. I actually, so yeah, what, what have you found so far? I found a lot of people that... Uh, I am trying to remember now. Basically just kind of forgot that they ordered stuff. I didn't think that I'd asked for them, but now thinking about it, I may have said, yeah, I'll take those. If I'm on the call, sometimes when I ask them if they've ordered seeds, or they'll say, you know what, like, actually, actually, now that you mention it, like, I, I did order seeds. Yeah, I'll send you the pictures, the link to Amazon where I ordered that. Well, I don't know if that's where they came from. Maybe they're like mildly surprised, like, oh yeah, I, I did order, I did order these. Um, how funny! And then you're on Amazon right now. <laughs> you know what? I must have actually ordered them because it is saying that I paid for shipping. Uh, yeah, I definitely have a seed order. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it. it was, yeah. yeah. I'll send and maybe it. at the time they won't realize that it's a a Chinese company that they ordered from. Departed mainland mainland China May 26th. Um, and it was it was delayed basically. So maybe I placed the order not realizing that they were coming from China. So, so far, I haven't found any examples of brushing. I mean, even just with these examples, one thing we've definitely shown is that some of the people who believed that they received mysterious unsolicited seed packets from China actually received e-commerce orders that they had made months before and that they'd forgotten about. Chris has since gone back to the USDA to ask about this theory. They said... We continue to believe it is implausible that thousands of people around the globe ordered seeds and either forgot about them or lied about forgetting them. Now, uh, by the way, I, I don't think at all that anyone lied. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm prepared to end up looking really silly if I'm, if, if you know, because Well, you're not it, the only one, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but, you know, they, you know, of course, there may be some other evidence out there but whatever it is, I think that on balance, it's related to people having ordered seeds and not realized that what eventually arrived in the summer of 2020 was a direct result of what they'd ordered. Wow. Wow. I mean, I just immediately can believe <laughs> that many people forgot um, because we had a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, and I think forgot feels like a sort of pejorative word. Yeah. You know, like if they did do what I'm describing, like they somehow did something silly that someone more on top of it wouldn't have done. I don't think that at all. Yeah. I think that because of the series of things that I've described, 
they failed to make an association, if I'm right, that was a very difficult association to make between, if you like, a click that they did made sometime in the spring and something very strange that arrived many months later. You know, all those reasons I gave, you know, I think that, you know, any one or two of them, I think you'd expect people to sort of nonetheless join the dots. But, you know, the dots really, really got spaced out here and they had a lot of weird stuff put in the middle of them. Hmm. Do you think the same thing would have happened if the packages were coming from Vietnam or some other country? By, by the way, a few of them did come from other countries. That's a, another subplot. Um, but I don't think it would have been the same. Unfortunately, reading a lot of these comments in some places, it does seem like there's fairly straight on bigotry involved. But I don't think everybody who felt sort of discomforted by that had to have even the slightest amount of that. I think it was just an extra thing that seemed really weird to a lot of people. And I, I think it probably did seem weirder just because, you know, China was in everyone's thoughts and people were desperately trying to understand things they didn't understand. And then there's something that you don't understand that's from China. It's like it's sort of joining in the whirlwind of what on earth is going on in your head, maybe. <laughs> Having had that experience myself, it's just, I, I just see the way it's so easy to, um, when you're in a moment of fear, yeah, to just let your thoughts run away. I mean, because we were all experiencing this like once in a lifetime thing that we never thought could be possible. No, we, we were used to fears that seemed impossible or unreasonable coming true. Yeah. And so once you've had that reset, it's hard not to potentially apply it to all kinds of things around you. Totally. I'm just thinking back to the original conspiracy theories that you read about, including my own, which was, um, you know, that the Chinese government is trying to sow distrust in the USPS or something. Just all of those theories... What do you make of the theory you've landed on? I think there's big lessons here to all of us about how easy it is to get it wrong. And I mean, it's a very obvious thing, I guess, but how easy it is to get it wrong and jump to conclusions. People like to do some pretty wild theorizing. Maybe some people are addicted to that. But what's a little bit worrying and chastening to me is that I think there's a lot of us also who are sort of addicted to setting stories like that straight. Hmm. And if you look at the brushing explanation, it was usually used like that. And I was probably going to use it like that, that I was going to see the sense where everyone had got it wrong, you know, and set everyone straight, make all that confusion and delusion go away. I think we have to be, we, I say, aligning myself with a who knows what. Um, <laughs> but, but I think that there's, um, you know, people who are looking to correct what they see as a lot of conspiracy and craziness in the world have to be really careful about checking themselves for arrogance because when that goes wrong, it backfires really horribly. So do you have any idea why you got sent the coat hanger? Well, <laughs> for months, I, I didn't know. And it was this huge mystery. So months passed like I think three or four months passed I was on the phone with my aunt who gives famously impractical gifts <laughs> she she was like oh did you get a package for me I gave you a coat hanger <laughs> <laughs> This episode was produced by Catherine Wells and Julia Longoria, with help from Honor Jones. Fact check by William Gordon and Michelle Soraka. Sound design by David Herman and Hannes Brown. Special thanks to Julia's aunt, Margarita, for the clothes rack. Music by Tasty Morsels, Nelson Nance, Joe Plord, and Hannes Brown. Our team also includes Gabrielle Burbet, Tracy Hunt, Emily Botine, and me, Natalia Ramirez. You can find Chris Heath's full article on mystery seeds at our website, theatlantic.com slash experiment. And if you liked this episode, please be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. The Experiment is a co-production of The Atlantic and WNYC Studios. 
Thank you for listening.